Hi, so today we will talk about uh, change management workflows in Tabret Edge. In Tabret Edge, workflows are used for creating and changing either an individual asset or a group, as a group of assets. So they could be applied to the entire asset collection. Tabret Edge comes with one pre built, uh, bundled in workflow called basic but there can be multiple different uh, workflow templates you could download additional workflow templates from tab quadrants website they provide various examples of, al you know, of alternative processes and you could also define your own custom workflow templates and you could uh, then upload them to your installation of tabred edge you could also disable this pre-built workflow template if you decided to not to use it and to use alternative workflows. When you have multiple workflow templates installed in Tab Red Edge, when a user starts a workflow, then depending on the context, they may be able to select from one or more appropriate uh, templates. So a little bit more on the workflow templates. Uh, the template specifies a set of changes that uh, a set of states and um, transitions between the states that the workflow can go through. And then for each uh, transition or movement between one state to another, there is additional information. First of all, who could uh, execute on this move, who could uh, move a workflow from one state to another, and then uh, also what additional actions should be performed as part of this transition. Uh, and it's important to remember that the templates themselves can have a scope. So for example, a template can be applicable to, uh, let's say, a data asset collection, but not to a glossary. Um, and also the scope could be based on the subject areas. So different business areas can, can implement their own uh, change management processes that are different from the ones that I implemented in, in other areas. When the workflow starts, Tabred Edge will create a working copy of an asset collection. This is a virtual view on an asset collection that owns or holds all the changes that are made as part of the workflow. So the workflow um, owns its own its set of changes as they go through the process. During this uh, period, um, the asset collection itself remains unchanged and the changes get, get only applied when the workflow completes successfully. Uh, with that, that virtual view, working copy, is um, presented to the user and also presented to the outside processes as if it existed. Um, it, it can be queried, it can be accessed through services, and, and so on. So let's take a look at how this works. Now in Tabred Edge, we'll go to Northwind, which is... Um, a collection, uh, a catalog of, in, of information in the North Wind database, the columns, tables, and so on. And uh, we could start a workflow. We could start a workflow for a specific asset, such as, for example, this database column, uh, by going to the More menu and starting a workflow. Or we could start a workflow for an entire asset collection if our set of changes applies to more than one asset. And that can be done by clicking on the home icon and again uh, doing start workflow here, or by going into the workflows tab, with, which lists all the workflows that are currently in progress, as well as all completed workflows, and gives you a chance to start a new workflow. So I'm going to start a workflow to identify um, critical um, data elements. 
And I have a number of workflow templates installed, so I have a choice of anything that's applicable here or defined as applicable. I'm going to pick basic because that's what um, by default you'll have available as well. So the workflow has been created now. And I know that I am in the workflow because I have this uh, pale ye yellow banner. That means that I am in the workflow. And currently the workflow is, is in, in the uncommitted status. I could have a diagramic view of uh, the possible states uh, for the workflow. As you could see, um, I could make some changes and then directly commit them or I could take them for a review where I'm gonna freeze changes for review and then they could be either approved or rejected and um, then if they are approved, they can be committed. If they are rejected, uh, the process can be restarted. So this is, uh, this is a template that allows for different alternative, either with review or without review. To get access to my content, I will, um, click on the asset tab just, just as I would do with a normal asset collection and I can start making my changes. So for example, I've decided that um, address is a critical data element. And I could make uh, this type of changes to um, multiple uh, data elements. I could also add new assets, I could delete, um, assets uh, I, I could add as well as uh, delete information. So just to give you an example, I'm going to modify more about to false as opposed to, as opposed to true. So now I have two, two changes. To exit uh, the workflow, I'll click on this X button. And now I'm back to my asset collection. So I'm now outside of the workflow. And if I click on this data element, you see that it's still nullable and there is no critical um, equal true here. So no changes are in effect until I move the workflow forward and the changes will be approved and subsequently committed. Uh, so uh, let's take um, let's talk a little bit about how we uh, could move the workflow from one state to another. So back in our presentation, the template for the workflow uh, defines what states the workflow can go through, and it's also defined who uh, and how can move the workflow from one state to another, and then what actions can be executed as part of the transition. And also important to note that templates can have a scope. Um, so um, a template can be you know, applicable to in, in, different, uh, in different places as, as I already said. So let's take a look at um, who can move a workflow to a new state? Um, users with in the in the right role or with the right permissions can um, can perform this action, and that is defined in a template uh, using either govern, governance roles or permission profiles. The basic uh, workflow template um, who could make transition is specified in terms of permission profiles, but some of the examples that you could download use governance roles. Now, another process uh, can also move the workflow from one state to another. So it's possible to do this prog pro programmatically. Um, a workflow can also be defined to auto transition between some states. For example, for escalation, you could say that if there is inactivity, then after some period of time, uh, the workflow auto transitions, and you define that period in the template. Um, it can also transition as a result of some event or as a result of voting when you have a voting step and um, you say that uh, 
X number of people need to vote, and then after after that, uh, after the necessary votes have been submitted, the workflow can move to the to the new state. Also, um, uh, a state can have some uh, special qualities as well. For example, a state can uh, put a workflow a working copy in an editable uh, state. Let's say. Um, if you move to frozen for review type of state, when the review process takes place, you don't want the content to change because you want the review to be applicable to the content as submitted. So while it's being reviewed, no changes are made, but the comments could still happen and so on. And then um, it's either approved um, or in which case it stays frozen, so no changes can be sneaked in between the approval and committal, or it's uh, rejected and then it's unfrozen and rework um, can happen. Uh, now, what actions can be executed as part of transition? So that's that's another important um, important point. So. Um, a variety of different actions could happen. Uh, for example, voting can be coordinated. Notification can be sent out. There could be service calls to other systems. There could be some ingestions of data uh, happening. Um, there could be validation of data happening and, and, and so on. So there is a variety of different things that could happen. The um, one um, built-in uh, action it has to do with committing a workflow. When the workflow is committed, then the changes get written uh, out to the production copy. So that's uh, part of the committed step. So let's move back to our workflow. I am still in um, in the North Wind in in the asset collection itself. And what I wanted to show you that if you're interested, if any workflows are changing information about a given asset, you could uh, click on the asset, then go to explore and see applicable workflows. And you see that in fact that um, this particular asset is being currently modif modified by this uh, this workflow and you see what changes are being made and uh, this one for example if I do this then you see that it's not being worked on in any in any workflow so that becomes important if uh, for example there is multiple workflows are going in parallel and both of them potentially making changes to um, to the same asset, or if you just want to know if there is anything, any imminent changes to the asset that you're looking at that uh, a workflow is currently busy with. So um, if you um, have a workflow for which you're responsible, for which you're responsible for the next step, you're going to see it in my workflows page. And you could always go to the workflow by selecting a workflow for, for which you have the next action. In my case, I'm an administrator, so I could make the next action and I'm going to see this workflows in, um, in my workflows page. And I could go to selected workflow this way. And now what I'm going to do mm, I could uh, I could either commit it or I could move it to frozen for review state, and I'm going to uh, freeze it for review just to show you impact of this. So now uh, back to the diagram view, you see now it's frozen for review, and um, the changes that could happen is uh, it could be just un unfrozen or it could be approved and or rejected. And when the workflow is in, in the state, I could run, uh, let's say, a report that would compare it 
with a production copy because that that would help me in my approval process. And here again, only one only one change is is me. I could not uh, edit. I could not make any more changes. So if I wanted to. Uh, make any changes, you see the edit tab is no longer available. There is no way for me to modify uh, edit button is no longer available. There is no way for me to modify any fields. The only thing I could do, I could still make comments and I could uh, I could look I could look at things and then I could decide to move it to the next to the next step. And to go back to the status and transition page, I'll click on this um, on this icon in the upper left corner. It's also possible to cancel the workflow if you are if you have the right uh, the right privileges. So I could uh, approve it uh, by going to the diagram, or I could approve it right here, and I'm gonna make that change. So now my workflow is approved. So this is reflected in my diagram view as well. And now the only option I have is to commit in which case all the changes will be um, written out. I could still also cancel, cancel the workflow. I'm gonna execute the commit now to complete the process. And now the workflow is finished. The changes have been applied. And this workflow um, is in the completed workflow page or, uh, or table. I could still uh, go back to it and I could either archive it if I want to write out uh, changes to a file or I could view a transition history which tells me who has um, moved it from one state to another. So for example, I know that uh, administrator was the one who approved it and when it happened, etc. So now going back to our asset collection, if we look at the data element that we have changed, we see that the changes have been applied now critical and nullable is, is false. And that completes our demo of uh, introduction to the workflows in Tabred Edge. Thank you for watching.